Welcome back to Sports Zone. I'm Jocelyn Mitchell, and of course, we have you covered with all the latest in sports. Farewell to the Rangers, good luck to the Stars, some Mean Green Sports, FC Dallas playoffs, and the Sparks and the Lynx link up again for their fight for the WNBA playoffs title. Let's get started with some Mean Green football. To help, I have here Shelby. Now, it's time for us to get started on our recap. North Texas, North Texas had a tremendous victory on the road this past Saturday as they defeated Southern Miss. North Texas wide receiver Jalen Guyton ended the game with 14 catches for 211 yards. The Mean Green football team ended the first quarter down by 14 points when Jeffrey Wilson put an end to that with 148 yards and three touchdowns in the third quarter. North Texas is the first team to score more than 24 points against Southern Miss. The final score was 43 to 28. That was amazing. Now I'm sure you got some good news for us for our story of the week. Why yes. don't you share it for us? Yes, I do. For the second straight year, the WNBA Finals is heading into a decisive game five between the 2016 champions, the Los Angeles Sparks, versus the Minnesota Lynx tonight. A rematch from last year in which the Sparks claimed the title with the NECA and Bumake last second game winner. The first two games were decided by two points, with the Sparks taking game one and the Lynx taking game two. The Sparks took game three, led by Candace Parker, who threw in her name for the Vinyl's MVP with an impressive line of 13 points, seven rebounds, five assists, five steals, and three blocked shots. The Sparks' defense shut down Lindsey Whelan and Simone Augustus. This was the first time in the postseason that Augustus was scoreless, which includes 53 career playoff games. In game four, it was the complete opposite, with a dominant offensive performance by the Minnesota Post players, who controlled the game and won it for the Lynx. Sylvia Fowles, the regular season MVP, scored 22 points and grabbed 14 rebounds. Rebecca Brunson also notched a double-double with 18 points and 13 rebounds. The Lynx controlled the boards, out-rebounding the Sparks 48-28. Now, for the Lynx to win tonight, they have to have that exact same performance with outstanding post play by Fowles and Brunson, and they also need Brunson to contain Parker, not only on shots, but on rebounds. Brunson needs to take out Parker out of the Sparks offense because most of it runs through her. One surprise of the finals has been the shooting of Renee Montgomery, who's been lights out behind the arc, and this will be needed as Alana Beard, the Defensive Player of the Year, continues to contain Maya Moore. For the Sparks to win, they'll need Parker and Agumake to outperform Brunson and Faust, which they're both capable of doing since they're both more versatile on offense and defense. The guards, Odyssey Sins and Chelsea Gray, outscored their counterparts 30-0 in Game 3, and they will need to bring that same heat in Game 5. But I predict the Sparks is going to win it all and claim a back-to-back -back titles, the first time it's been done in 15 years since the Sparks did it in the 2001-2002 season. Minnesota has the better guards, but the story of this finals has been the front court, and the Sparks come out on top with theirs. But no matter which team wins, their organization will join WNBA history with the Houston Comets to achieve four championship titles. Now, I agree with you because I am old school, so I'm always going to do that. But thank you so much, Shelby. Now we're going to move over to the green screen for our game of the week with Peyton Russell. Thanks, Jocelyn. Well, there were a lot of good games over the past week, but the Cowboys and Rams game was one that really caught my eye. The Cowboys absolutely dominated the Rams in the first half and went into halftime with a 24-16 lead. It would be all Todd Gurley and the Rams for the entire second half as they outscored Dallas 19-6 and eventually won 35-30. The loss puts the Cowboys back at the 500 record, and they already have more losses than they did through week 13 of last season. Despite the loss, Dak Prescott and Des Bryant both had really good games. Dak threw for 252 yards and three touchdowns. Des had almost 100 yards receiving, which was by far the best game of the season yet. But what exactly went wrong against the Rams in the second half? Dak was unable to keep drives going. The defense couldn't keep the Rams off the scoreboard as they scored in five of their seven possessions. Greg Zerline made seven field goals, and the curse of Wade Phillips haunts the Cowboys once again. The Cowboy if the Cowboys thought the Rams were tough, they will have their hands full this weekend as the Packers visit Arlington in a rematch of last year's divisional playoffs. Aaron Rodgers will once again have a chance to crush the Cowboys' hearts. A loss wouldn't eliminate Dallas from the playoffs, but when they still face teams like the Chiefs, Falcons, Raiders, and Seahawks, it would really put this team in a tough position for the remainder of the season. Back to you guys at the desk. 
Michigan State visits number seven ranked Michigan this weekend in a big primetime game on ABC. Why is that important for Mean Green fans? An ESPN commercial promoting the game referenced Michigan State as the Mean Green. NTTV spoke with athletic director Ren Baker about the trademarking incident this morning. After uh, dinner, uh, we cleaned up a little bit, put our girls to bed, and Heather and I were uh, sitting there watching TV and uh, started getting a couple of emails and, and uh, texts about an ESPN commercial promoting the Michigan-Michigan State game. And uh, where when they flashed Michigan State there, they put Mean Green. And so uh, we uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, you know, took some exception to that. Uh, and I, uh, we put the, progress, the wheels in motion to have our licensing agent send them a note that we own the uh, rights to Mean Green. Uh, ESPN. Um, uh, called this morning. Uh, I got an email from Mark Hollis, the AD at Michigan State, who's a great, great uh, man and leader, one of the true professionals in our industry. And uh, and he said, hey, I understand where you're coming from. We also have reached out to ESPN and ESPN called and, and apologized. They've been a longtime partner, not only with us, but Conference USA and uh, said, hey, we're going to get this taken down and corrected as soon as possible. So, um, you know, it's a it's a happy ending to the to the story for sure, and and uh, one that uh, you know that I'm I'm glad to see get resolved quickly. Like uh, I think my wife was watching The Voice, and so I was just kind of sitting there uh, and was like, oh, okay, you know. And uh, I like to have fun uh, with uh, Twitter. Those uh, our fans that follow me. Uh, well, they get probably get to see uh, a little bit of my personality. I, I, I think that's important. And so, um, yeah, I was just, you know, having fun with it while at the same time letting people know that we were aware and we were going to address it. And uh, um, all's well that, that ends well. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, you know, proud of uh, the North Texas uh, fans and proud of, of the Mean Green uh, uh, phrase that, you know, that that's something that, uh, that our fans have embraced and, and it's a unique tradition of ours. This was not the first time the mistake was made. Last year, Nike and Michigan State released new uniforms, nicknaming the color used Mean Green. Baker said that issue will also be looked into as well to ensure no confusion is made in the future. For more coverage on the trademark issues, be sure to watch NTTV Nightly News tonight at 6 here on NTTV. When we come back, volleyball is on fire in their conference. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No? Okay. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home. Early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. After my stroke, when Meals on Meals started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. And I appreciated it very much, the attention that was given. <laughs> My name is Julius Gaines, creative writer, poet, photographer. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org.
Mean Green Volleyball made a 3-0 sweep against Oklahoma last Wednesday in front of a record-breaking crowd of 719 here at the Volleyball Center. Senior middle back Holly Millam makes history by becoming the first in North Texas to accumulate 900 kills, 600 digs, and 250 blocks with her 12 kills, 7 digs, and block assists in the game. Senior middle blocker Amanda Chamberlain also made some noise, posting seven total blocks, making sixth in program history with career block assists and eighth in career blocks. She made 14 kills against the Sooners. Now, that's crazy. I don't know about you guys. We're, first, we're going to talk about the, um, the set that sealed the game. It was a trio. It was Millam. She tossed it, um, hoping that York would catch it, and then York did a little, you know, bump, and then Wright end up catching it. And then they end up sealing the game with that one set right there. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot of trust to do that. Do you think that they have, what it, like, the trust for that? What do you think about that? Trip? Yeah, well, I mean, you mentioned a couple names. Two seniors, Amanda Chamberlain and Holly Millam, really took over. I mean, what they were to accomplish, Amanda Chamberlain, seven blocks, 14 kills. You know, you talked about the records and stuff, and that's just the beginning of the season or beginning of conference play. They have the rest of conference play to build off that win, and that win over OU was a statement victory for the Mean Green. Definitely. Yeah, and I also agree. Um, they had a little bit of a tough time in the first set, but that little uh, moment they had to, you know, get back, rest up, and just really calm down from the moment, because you realize there, uh, it was a historic moment for Milan and Chamberlain, yeah. and also the crowd was as big as it's ever been. So I think that was just a great test for them, and it's just gonna, you know, help them out in the during the rest of the season when they face bigger and better opponents in the Conference USA. To be honest, for my nose for Amanda Chamberlain, I just have she's a beast because <laughs> she, she really, she is. really yes. is. She's just that good. Now my next one is they have already had two games for the conference with UTSA. They were three and one, and then they just went ahead and swept La Tech this weekend. What do you think about it? Do you think that they're actually up there as a top contender now, or? Is it too early to say that? I mean, it is early in the season, but when they win, they close out games early on, and I think that's the biggest key. They don't fall behind in the matchups. They don't go behind, you know, 1-0 set. You know, they take the lead. They really put themselves in a position where they can start closing out games after that third set, and when they get in conference play, I think that'll really help out. Yeah. I absolutely agree with Peyton. Uh, when they close out games, when they sweep their opponents, they're unbeaten, but yeah. it's when they're taken to that fourth game, when they're taken to that mm -hmm. fifth game, that's when they have their uh, – uh, two losses on the season so during out they need to just close out all their opponents and that's one of their strengths this year okay last question do you think that they can have a shot in the NCAA tournament this year oh definitely yeah. I just think that um, uh, this season Western Kentucky was uh, predicted to be another championship win but I think we have enough people on uh, the volleyball team to counteract that and go the distance with Western Kentucky. And I think they're the biggest obstacle, but I think we can easily overcome that. Yeah, look, I mean, conference play is going to be a blast to watch. It starts uh, on Friday against UAB. Look, they're 9-1 and one at home. If they can take advantage of those home games and win those, then it makes it a lot easier to get to that NCAA tournament. Cool, cool. Okay, now we're going to switch gears. It is time for some role playing. This is called WWCD. What would Coach do? I will give Peyton and Shelby three scenarios, and they will have to say what they will do as a coach. Since it is football season, you two will play the role of Coach Latrell. Are okay. you ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Okay, the first question. The defense kept the Eagles in the game until the offense started getting around. Looking forward to UTSA coming up. What changes can be made to help the offense have a better start? Well, I think it starts with the man in the backfield, Jeffrey Wilson. Get him the ball going earlier yeah. in the game. If he can start scoring and putting up points in the first half, it makes him that better. That much makes the main green that much better going in the second half. Look, the man averages 7.2 yards per carry. You can't be afraid to run the ball on third and four, third mm -hmm. and five. If you can get that going, you can get UTSA to second guess themselves, and that just leaves the doors wide open. Yeah. 
I agree with that, and I also agree that we need to add in more slant routes. Um, we faced a big defensive opponent pa this past weekend, and to me, I think Fine was just, you know, he was looking downfield a little bit too much during the beginning of the, t uh, the start of the game, and that's how they got to him. So this is a great uh, game for them to just, you know, start moving past those big defenses. If we can include more slant routes and get Jeffrey Wilson going probably in the catching game, I think we're going to be unstoppable this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is a different scenario. We have fourth quarter, two-minute drill. God forbids I don't have any wood around me, but Jalen <laughs> yeah. Guyton gets injured. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. God forbid. Who can you trust in that spot? I think you still got to target Jeffrey Wilson. Okay. Run or pass it, you know, throw him out for a fade route, whatever. Get him the ball. I think, though, Mason Fine can also connect with guys like Lawrence and Chumley on the outside routes. You know, like you said earlier, throw a post route, something. Get the defense second-guessing themselves. Also, I mean, I agree with that. I also feel like that Fine had an incredible night. We just didn't know that he spread he spread the ball. Like we didn't, we don't know that because Guyton had such a huge night. But he had eight different targets that entire night. So I don't think we'll be, you know, an incredible loss if something does happen to Guyton. I just feel like he has incredible targets and he'll learn how to use the rest of them during cool. the season. Cool. Okay. Last but not least, offense or defense to get us in Pro Bowl. Uh, Defense wins championships. Yeah, cool. Same. Okay. <laughs> we will be right back for our MLS and Rangers quick hit. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. been a tough year for the FC Dallas team and for their fans. After enjoying one of their most successful seasons last year, winning the double and the Open Cup and the Supporters Shield, FC Dallas is in danger of being on the outside looking in for the playoffs. FC Dallas spent the past two years at the top of the Western Conference table and now they have, they've been an absolute force to be reckoned with and have clinched the first spot of the playoffs, but not this year. They are fighting tooth and nail just to stay in the race, which is unbelievably tight as we head into the last games of the season. For the first time in four years, FC Dallas might miss the postseason as they are tied for the last playoff spot for Real South Lake and the San Jose Earthquakes. They are one point behind Houston and five points behind the three-way tie with the second place holders, Por Portland, Sporting KC, and Seattle. One positive note for Dallas is that they have one game in hand against an already eliminated Colorado team plus two more games to cap off the season against Seattle and historically bad L.A. team. Out of those two teams who share 42 points with Dallas, they have the easiest schedule to pick up points. Oscar Pereira's side need to be more consistent overall. They need to find a way to finish in the final third. And Jesse Gonzalez, who's recorded his ninth shutout on the season this weekend, needs to keep being a stud between the posts. These are important key factors if the FC Dallas team wants to not only make the playoffs, but have a chance to prolong their postseason. The Texas Rangers will not be playing in the postseason for just a third time in the past eight years. This season had high hopes as the Rangers were coming off of back-to-back -back division titles and led the league last season in wins. The Rangers got off on the wrong foot ever since opening day. The bullpen struggled almost all season and could never hold a lead. Adrian Beltre only played in 94 games. Rugnit Odor hit 204 on the season after signing a six-year, $49.5 million deal in the offseason. Mike Napoli hit a slumping 193, and neither of them could stay consistent, despite having almost 60 home runs between the two of them. The Rangers were sellers at the trading deadline and sold away key players like Jonathan Lucroy and Hugh Darvish. We even forget that this team won 10 games in a row at one point in the season. 
The Rangers still had numerous opportunities to grab a wild card spot. On August 25th, the Rangers were just one game back of a playoff spot, and it almost looked like this team was going to pull off the miracle. The Rangers would never get, to get that close again as they continued to struggle mightily in September, winning just 12 of 29 games. Texas will have plenty of options in the offseason, but pitching remains a must. The Rangers are possible favorites to signing Japanese superstar pitcher and hitter Shohei Otani, a guy who can compete for a Cy Young Award plus hit around 30 home runs a season. It would be something Major League Baseball has never seen before. Laning Otani could also buy interest from Hugh Darvish returning to the Rangers, which could potentially make Texas favorites of making the World Series in 2018. This team is far from rebuilding, but the moves must be made this offseason if the Rangers want any hope for the future. It is time to party like it's 1999 with the Dallas Stars as they welcome back former head coach Ken Hitchcock. Hitchcock led the Stars to their first Stanley Cup title in 1999 and has came back for another. Our first game of the season is against the inaugural team, the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Since their expansion, the Golden Knights have gained a massive amount of talent. Forward David Perron, three-time Stanley Cup recipient Mark andre Fleury, and Calvin Packard at the goalie, and former Dallas star Cody Eakin. Eakin played four seasons with the Stars. In his last season, he scored three goals and had nine assists. Although the Golden Knights did not have such a pre golden preseason, I do believe once they warm up, they will be a power team. However, I am not at all worried about the Stars, seeing that we too have made some changes. We have Alexander Radunov, Taylor Seguin, is back from his injury, Jason Spezza as the number two center, and our new goalie, Ben Bishop. Ben has the ability to take this team to the next level. He is one of the best puck handlers in the league, which can really help us defensively. The star is definitely pointing up again from our players to our old yet new coach, and the fact that two of the three games we won in preseason were on home ice. This will be a head-to-head -head game. The Stars will host the game this Friday at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Coming up, weather forecast for the weekend preview. Before we go to break, SportsZone would like to give our condolences to the hockey world for their loss. Dave the Voice Schrader died in his home this past Sunday. Mr. Schrader was an announcer for the Stars as well as a broadcaster on NBC Sports. He was 62 years old. We'll be right back. I rescued Toast from a shelter in 2011. I love Toast because she's a lazy diva. Toast makes me laugh. <laughs> when I walked into the shelter, I knew she was special. So, I'm kinda new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Open road, here comes the Hefley family. Whether it's a short trip or a long haul. Estimated time, 47 hours. They will beg. You're hungry? I'm happy to provide. They will plead. Deep, Deep fried, fried butter, butter on, on a stick. stick. But whatever you do, don't wimp out. Now you're talking? Make them buckle up. They can't hurt. Remember, safety first. Cheese curls. Second. Are you orange? Here we go. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. We're gonna get wet. Alright, here we go. Oh, no. Okay, Oh yeah, yes. So much fun. Mwah. 
So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mine. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. It is now time for our weather forecast for the weekend. We have lots of great sporting events coming up from Dallas Stars on Friday to Dallas Cowboys versus the Cheeseheads on Sunday. So we definitely want to make sure that you guys are covered. So moving on to Friday, it'll be a high of 86. And then by the end of the night, it'll be at a low of 68. So we're going to move on to Saturday and it'll be at a high of 82 in the end of the night it'll be 64 degrees, but it'll also be a 10% chance of rain. Moving on to Sunday on the boys' day, we have 88 at a high, and then we have our low at 66, but we also have 25% chance of rain, which means, ladies, this is a ponytail and baseball cap kind of weekend. Now we're gonna turn it over to Peyton and Shelby for our weekend preview. All right, thanks, Justin. We have a great lineup with Denton High School football on Friday. Denton High travels to Sherman looking for their first district win of the season. Denton Geyer travels to Plano to take on Plano East at 730. And last but not least, Denton Ryan will host Denton Braswell as Ryan looks to stay undefeated on the season. Moving on to the Ming Green Sports, the volleyball team will be taking on UAB this Friday here in Denton. It will be a clash at the top of the Conference USA table, and the UNT soccer team will be facing UTEP on Friday. The volleyball team will end the weekend with the University of Texas San Antonio as they look to stay at the top of the table. The DFW area will have plenty of games at the professional level as the Cowboys will look to bounce back in Arlington as they take on Aaron, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers on Sunday. The Dallas Stars open up their season on Friday against the newest team in the league, the Vegas Golden Knights. The Stars also take on Central Division rival St. Louis Blues on the road on Saturday. The Mavericks continue their preseason with a game tonight against the Bulls at home and will travel to Orlando tomorrow to battle the Magic. That's really great. Thank you all so much for watching us. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at NT. Sports Zone. We will see you same place, same time next week. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you 